Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. There's even a brand new Brigadier General tier where you can get a shout out on a Commander's Quarters episode that's dedicated to you. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. So today's episode comes to you courtesy of my amazing patrons. Once a month, patrons vote on what commander that they like to see in an upcoming episode. The commander that gets the most votes wins. And the commander that won this month's vote is Quain Itinerant Meddler. Quain is, of course, a rabbit wizard, so yeah, that might explain the title for this episode being Bunny Cops. Actually, the cops part probably not explained so much, but we'll get to that here in a bit. Regardless, Quain is a 1-3 rabbit wizard for white-blue. He is a very simple commander with one activated ability that says, Tap, each player may draw a card, then each player who drew a card this way gains one life. So yeah, now you might be thinking, okay, how in the world is this a bunny cop? I mean, this seems like the most friendly bunny of all time, right? Just essentially tapping and allowing everyone if they would like to. It's not even a forced draw. It is a may draw, and if they do draw a card, they gain a life. And actually, seeming like a friendly commander with a non-threatening ability is definitely an advantage for us. We're definitely not going to be a big target early, and we can utilize this commander in a political way to help control the board and to dish out some value to other players. If someone needs an extra card during their turn, well, maybe we ask for a favor in exchange for actually tapping Quain, and yeah, we've got plenty of ways to untap and tap Quain again. And of course, we've got ways to help even the playing field, prevent players from getting too far ahead, and yeah, just ensure that, you know, if someone's a big target, maybe we make them an even bigger target for everyone else. So we can help make sure that other players get taken out, and then when it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, well, we've got plenty of ways to take over the game from there. So yeah, this cute bunny commander might seem very friendly and not all that threatening, but you know, when we need to, the bunny cop can come out and take over the game. And really quick before we jump into the cards that we're going to be using in this deck, every single card in this deck, including the commander, is less than $1. So yeah, this deck is very budget friendly, and with all that said, let's jump into it. First off, some very simple and cheap on tap effects like Burst of Energy, Twiddle, and Dream Script can be huge in this deck. Again, we are looking to seem non-threatening and to do favors for other players, so by untapping Quain, we can tap Quain again, and everyone gets a draw and gain some life if they want to. Burst of Energy says untap target permanent, Twiddle says tap or untap target artifact creature or land, and Dream Script says choose one, tap target permanent or untap target permanent. And on top of that, we can entwine it to get both. And we also have some other cards that can interact very well with these, and we'll get to those here in a bit. But of course, we're not quite done yet with our cheap untap effects that essentially act as cantrips like Vault Skyward, Wings of the Cosmos, and Dare's Resolve. Vault Skyward says target creature gains flying until end of turn, untap it. Wings of the Cosmos does the exact same thing, but it also gives plus one plus three. And then Jerry's Resolve says untap target creature prevent all damage to be dealt to it this turn, or we can cycle it for two. Again, with all these being one mana spells though, we can easily cast them and we can cast them quickly. And then moving on, we've got Veteran's Reflexes, which says target creature gets plus plus one until end of turn, untap that creature, and Triton Tactics, well, that can untap more than one creature. It says up to two target creatures each get plus zero plus three until end of turn, untap those creatures. At this turn's next end of combat, tap each creature that was blocked by one of those creatures this turn and doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So yeah, Quain is a 1-3 and adding this to his total, it'd be a 1-6. So yeah, Quain can block a good amount of things out there and still survive. And yeah, forcing something else to tap down and not be able to untap, that's a nice extra benefit. And speaking of a nice extra benefit, Refocus says, untap target creature, draw a card. So this is kind of like a two mana draw two spell for us. Regardless, next up there's Blessed Alliance, which is a flexible card. It's got Escalate for two, and it says choose one or more. Target player gains four life, untapped up to two target creatures, or target upon sacrifice an attacking creature. So yeah, this can really help us out in combat, and again, we can utilize this as a favor again if someone's being attacked by someone else, and we don't, you know, 
really want that creature to stick around. Anyways, we can make a deal with that player where we're saying, hey, I can make that player sacrifice this creature, but what are you going to do for me? Another deal card that can help us out is Energy Arc. It says, untap any number of target creatures, prevent all combat damage to be dealt to and dealt by those creatures this turn. Basically, this is a mass fog forest that also allows us to untap Quain. And actually, it works pretty incredibly with a card that I'm going to bring up here in a bit. Another incredible card in this deck is Dramatic Reversal, which says, untap all non-lane permanents you control. So yeah, basically, untap Quain, our mana rocks, and other things. Yeah, what's not to like? We also have some repeatable untap effects, though, with things like Unbender Tine and Retreat to Coral Helm. Unbender Tine has tapped, untap another target permanent. And Retreat to Coral Helm has landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. You may tap or untap target creature or scry one. Now, as good as these cards are, though, there's still one card in this deck that stands above the rest, and that's going to be the Golden Pig of this deck, which is the number one card out of our 99. And the Golden Pig for this deck is Stinging Lionfish. This unassuming creature can actually provide us a lot of value throughout the game. It's a 2-1 enchantment creature fish that costs 1 in a blue, and it says whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, you may tap or untap target non-land permanent. We have a ton of instants in this deck, and yeah, now every single time we cast them on an opponent's turn, we get a free untap. Again, even just with all those ones I just mentioned, that's basically two untaps, again, for one or two mana. So again, that's even more Quain value, or, you know, if we actually want to untap one of our mana rocks, we can get mana back from that, or untap something else, and yeah, this can really come in handy in a lot of situations. Again, if we can cast one thing on each opponent's turn, that's gonna be an extra three untaps each trip around the table. So yeah, this small two mana creature provides us a ton of value, and that's why it's the Golden Pig. And speaking of value, some slightly higher costed cards that also provide a lot of value are Thought Reflection, Swarm Intelligence, and Wizard Spellbook. Thought Reflection says if you would draw a card, draw two cards instead. So yeah, now we're going to be getting twice as much value out of Quain when we tap it. And speaking of twice as much value, Swarm Intelligence says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may copy that spell you may choose to targets for the copy. Again, we are running an incredible amount of instants and sorceries in this deck, and now we get twice as much value out of each of them. And we can get even more value out of them by basically casting them again with Wizard Spellbook. It says, tap, exile target, insert sorcery card from a graveyard, roll a d20, activate only as a sorcery. If we roll a 1 through 9, we copy that card and we may cast the copy. If we roll a 10 through 19, we copy the card being casted by paying 1 rather than it's paying its mana cost. But if we roll a 20, well... We copy each card exile with Wizard Spellbook. You may cast any number of the copies without paying their mana cost. Now, obviously, that's not all that likely. You know, again, a 5% chance or whatnot. But still, that's a huge effect. And still, we can get a lot of value out of this card without rolling that, obviously. And also with this one, make sure you keep in mind you can target your opponent's spells in their graveyards as well. And speaking of our opponents... One absolutely incredible enchantment in this deck is Dismiss Into Dream. It says each creature your opponent's control is an illusion in addition to its other types and has, when this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. This makes our opponent's creatures incredibly fragile. Do you remember that energy art card that I was talking about that is basically a fog that can untap any number of target creatures? Well, in combination with this, it's a two mana, one-sided massive board wipe. And yeah, like you've already seen, we've got plenty of spells that can just target a specific creature. You know, even again, if it's, hey, untap this creature, it really doesn't matter what the spell actually does. The opponent is going to have to sacrifice that creature. And of course, keep in mind, again, this is just affecting our opponent's creatures and not ours. Regardless of the things that just affect our opponents, or should I say opponent, Curse of Exhaustion and Curse of Verbosity can really come in handy as well. Curse of Exhaustion says, Enchanted player can't cast more than one spell each turn. So if a player is getting too far ahead, and yeah, we don't want them to take advantage of all the cards that we might be giving them with Quain, well, we can just slap this on them and really slow them down. Or we can also put a huge target on a player's back with Curse of Verbosity. It says Enchant Player, whenever Enchanted Player is attacked, you draw a card. Each opponent attacking that player does the same. So we give a nice little incentive for players to swing at someone else. And yeah, we get an extra benefit when they do. And if you've ever heard the phrase, the carrot or the stick, which is actually kind of funny because, you know, bunnies like carrots. Regardless, though, this is more of the carrot approach. We're like, hey, do this because, well, you get a benefit for that. But when it comes to the stick approach, well, we've got things like Windborn Muse, Spurn Mage Advocate, and Wing Shards. Windborn Muse says creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature they control that's attacking you. So those players aren't going to get any benefits from actually attacking someone else. Well, I, I guess the benefit is that they're not having to pay mana to do so. So yeah, this is a great deterrent. Another great deterrent comes with Spurn Mage Advocate, which is one of Eddie's favorite cards. And yeah, it's a pretty fantastically spicy one. 
It's a simple one mana creature that has tap return two target cards from an opponent's graveyard to their hand, destroy target attacking creature. This is a fantastic politics card. Not only can we use this to get rid of an attacking creature, but we can also use it as a political tool to get favors. Maybe an opponent's missing land drops and they've got a Terramorphic Expanse in their graveyard, or they've got a removal spell and we want them to get rid of something. We can take out a creature for them or for ourselves and make a deal with them to give them back two cards in exchange again for using them to benefit us. Or you know, we don't really even have to politic with something like Wing Shards that can take out a ton of creatures. It says target player sacrificed an attacking creature and it's got Storm. And remember all those small spells that we started this episode off with? Yeah, we've got plenty of ways to get that storm count up, and again, keep in mind this counts our opponent's spells as well. But we can also just take out all attacking creatures with Aetherize and Aether Spouts. Aetherize says return all attacking creatures to the owner's hand, and Aether Spouts says for each attacking creature its owner puts on the top or bottom of their library. So yeah, Aether Spouts is especially brutal, essentially getting rid of creatures either permanently or making it so that that player has to draw into them to get them back. Regardless, when opponents know that we've got cards like these just by even using one once, well, they're going to be less likely to actually attack us. But if we know an opponent is likely to attack us, we can just, you know, tap all the things down with something like Bluster Squall or Sleep. Bluster Squall says, tap target creature you don't control, and it's got an overload cost of 3 and a blue. So yeah, obviously tapping everyone's creatures down, but ours can be incredibly impactful. It can prevent us from getting swung at, or, you know, it can leave someone wide open for our opponents to swing through at them, or for us to swing through at them too. And speaking of leaving someone wide open, yeah, Sleep can be absolutely brutal in the right situation. It says, tap all creatures target player controls, those creatures don't untap during that player's next untap step. So this can leave someone wide open for multiple turns, and yeah, you're not going to survive very long in Commander when that happens. But of course, if the board gets a bit too overwhelming, well, we can just, you know, wipe it with things like Divine Reckoning slash the ranks and Time Wipe. Divine Reckoning says each player chooses a creature they control, destroy the rest, and it's got a flashback cost of 5 white white. Slash the ranks says destroy all creatures and planeswalkers except for commanders. And Time Wipe says return a creature control to its owner's hand and destroy all creatures. Basically, these are mass board wipes that, well, allow us to keep our commander around so we can just keep tapping for more draw value. Speaking of which, we've also got things like Promise of Loyalty, Tragic Arrogance, and Cleansing Nova. Promise of Loyalty says each player puts a vow counter on a creature they control and sacrifices the rest. Each of those creatures can attack you or a planeswalker you control for as long as that has a vow counter on it. So yeah, a couple of creatures might stay in play, but none of them can actually attack us. Moving on, Tragic Arrogance says for each player you choose from among the permanents that player controls an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker, then each player sacrifices all other non-lane permanents they control. Since we get to make all the choices, our opponents are going to be in big trouble. And then Cleansing Nova says choose one to destroy all creatures or destroy all artifacts and enchantments. So yeah, this is a flexible board wipe that can help us out in a lot of situations. But sometimes we need a more targeted approach. So we're also going to be running some removal spells with things like Forsake the Worldly, Oblation, Aether Gale, Raven Form, and Crush Contraband. And in case we just have to actually stop something before it even happens, well, we've got counter spells with things like Negate, Unwind, Rewind, Thess's Intervention, Neutralize, and Absorb. So yeah, policing the board and people's spells is a tough job, but some bunnies gotta do it. And yeah, did you hear I, I said some bunny and not somebody? Funny, right? No? Okay. <clears throat> okay, regardless, when it comes to ramp, we've got some interesting ramp options that can really help out a deck like this. First up, we've got Scholarship Sponsor, which says, When it enters the battlefield, each player controls fewer lands than the player who controls the most lands, searches the library for a number of basic land cards less than or equal to the difference, puts those cards on the battlefield, tap, then shuffles. Basically, hey, thanks screen player over there for, you know, ramping a ton and getting a lot of lands in play. Now everyone's got the exact same amount of lands as you. And then Pen of Prosperity is another fantastic political tool for us. It's going to enter the battlefield under the control of an opponent of your choice, and by paying two and tapping it, you draw a card that may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Pen of Prosperity's owner draws a card, and then that player may put a land card from their hand onto the battlefield. Basically, we give this to another friendly player to us and basically say, hey, you know, we're buddies, right? So why don't you just activate that and we both benefit, you know, we both get a draw and get an extra land into play. And speaking of a friendly card, how about Victory Chimes? It's gonna untap during each other player's untapped step and we can tap in a player of our choice adds colorless. Now, first off, obviously this is a fantastic mana rock for a deck like this one that is looking to cast spells, well, on our opponent's turns quite a bit. And of course, on top of that, obviously we can make a deal with a player if they're, you know, just one mana short on something, we can say, okay, Hey, you know what? If you need the mana from this mana rock, just let me know and I'll give it to you on the condition of X, Y, and Z. As always, though, make sure you're very specific with your deals. Regardless, we're also going to be utilizing some other mana rocks like Everflowing Chalice, Azoria Signet, Mindstone, Marble Diamond, Sky Diamond, Liquid Metal Torque, and the Celestis. 
And finally, when it comes to ramp, well, okay, technically this isn't a ramp card, but it is a cost reduction card and it can really help us out throughout the game. Jace's Sanctum is fantastic in this deck. It says instant sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, scry one. So obviously the scrying one can make our draws even more impactful with Quain, and yeah, the cost reduction is fantastic. It can save us a ton of mana throughout the game and help us cast more spells in a turn. Regardless, let's say again that things go as planned. We police the board, we work together a another player, and you know what, we've taken out the other two opponents. Now what? Well, now unfortunately we've got to play Bad Cop, and well, we're going to be playing things like Melodric Summonings, Mass Manipulation, and Rise from the Tides. Melodric Summoning says whenever you cast an Insert Sorcery spell, create an XX Colors Construct Artifact Creature Token, where X of that spell's mana value. So we can make a massive army with this throughout the game, and of course, by paying 3 blue blue, we can exile it to return all Instant Sorcery cards from our graveyard to our hand, but we can only activate if we've got 6 more artifacts, which again is not that hard to meet with, you know, this in play. So yeah, we can go get back every single one of our instants and sorceries that we've utilized through the game. And again, a lot of ours pack quite a punch. Next up, Mass Manipulation is a fantastic finisher for us as well. It says gain control of x creatures and or planeswalkers. So again, by working together with that opponent, they have probably built up a board because we've been controlling other players' things. And now you know what? We can just take their best creatures and planeswalkers and take over the game from there. Or, you know, if we've got all of our instants and sorceries in our graveyard still, something like Rise from the Tides can be huge. It says create a tap 2-2 black zombie creature token for each instant sorcery card in your graveyard. So, basically, for, you know, 6 mana, this can be an overwhelming force out of absolutely nowhere. And speaking of an overwhelming force, let's talk about Stormherd. It says create X-1-1 white pegasus creature tokens with flying where X is your life total. Again, keep in mind that Quain actually helps boost our life whenever we're tapping Quain, so yeah, we're gonna have quite a bit of life and be able to make a giant army of pegasuses. Pegasi, whatever they're called. Or, you know, we can have a soldier army or an angel army thanks to the Decree of Justice. For XX2 white white, we can create X44 white angel creature tokens with flying. Or, you know, we can cycle it for two and a white, and when we do, we can pay X, and if we do, we create X11 white soldier creature tokens. Each of these can be a fantastic way to help us finish off opponents, and yeah, by cycling, we can actually do it out of nowhere right before our turn. And speaking of out of nowhere, we actually can finish off our opponents with commander damage. Yes, you heard me right. Our 1-3 Bunny Wizard Commander can finish off opponents with commander damage thanks to Room Chanter's Pike. It's an equipment that says, Equip creature has first strike and gets plus X plus zero where X the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Yeah, this can very easily turn Quain into a two-shot kill. With this one though, please be careful. Do not play this card too early. Now, yes, in some situations you might be able to, you know, convince others that you can claim that this is actually just a defensive card and you're using it to, you know, slap on your commander to make sure players don't attack you. But yeah, if Quain gets to 10 plus power with this in play, your opponents are going to get pretty wary of you. So yeah, again, the goal of this deck is to really not look like that much of a threat until it's too late for that last player. So yeah, your opponent might think they have the upper hand when it's just the two of you, but all of a sudden, for just four mana, you put this on the field and attach it to your commander. And now all of a sudden, Quain can take them out in two hits. And again, you also have plenty of ways to tap down their creatures or get rid of their creatures to get your commander through. So yeah, have fun taking out your opponents with the cute little bunny rabbit Quain. Regardless, now that we've gone through every single non lane card in this deck, it's time to talk about the price. As I mentioned at the very start of this episode, every single card in this deck, including the commander, is less than $1. So the estimated cost for this deck is just $33.48. And actually, keep in mind that this includes basic lands at $0.10 cents a piece, so yeah, there's plenty of savings there if you've already got basic lands. On top of that, speaking of savings, if you buy this deck on TCG Player and utilize their heavily played or damaged cards, you can save even more. Though, also keep in mind that this estimated cost does not include the cost of shipping, which might vary depending upon where you live. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.